Hey guys, uh, now we're gonna look at uh, in more detail uh, the reason behind uh, the spacing of the upper and lower stacks of springs on a low fork. Uh, why do we have that? Why is that so important? Uh, well, uh, to understand this, first uh, we need to understand just a single leaf spring, uh, one of these here. So. Here I have uh, a single spring from a TR Boost cross country fork. Uh, we need to understand the properties uh, of a single spring uh, before we start putting many of them together and, uh, to make them work together. First, we need to know the individual players of the team before we assemble the team. Uh, so, it's really flexible. In this direction, a spring, obviously. I mean, this is what we're going to use for the suspension. Uh, but also, uh, it has very little resistance to uh, torsion. So it's really easy to twist the spring like this. Uh, so these are the first two degrees of freedom uh, of the spring here. Uh, and the third one uh, being uh, lateral flex. So if you take a spring and, and try to flex it like this. Uh, so Basically, nothing happens if we try to flex it like this. This particular spring, because of its dimensions, uh, is around 150 times stiffer uh, if we try to flex it like this uh, rather than this. Uh, so, knowing these properties of a spring, how do we make a good fork uh, utilizing these properties? Uh, first off, it's, it's never going to be a good idea to have uh, a single spring, just a single flexing spring on each side of the fork. Uh, because there you are completely vulnerable uh, to the torsion. You're going to end up with a fork that you're just uh, not able to make a single turn on. It's going to be just way too, uh, way too sketchy to ride. Uh, so, what you need to do, you need to yeah, utilize this while avoiding this. Uh, how do we avoid the twist? Uh, we use the lateral stiffness. So basically, uh, we have this spring here, the lower spring, and then we put another spring above it uh, that absorbs the twist of this spring uh, by its lateral stiffness. Okay, let's look at this. Here I have... Uh, a fatigue testing sample here we use to test our springs uh, slow forks uh, so here we have two springs put together uh, and now all of a sudden it's impossible to twist this this is a really simple concept but still a one uh, that a lot of designers throughout the years have failed to grasp uh, if you try to make uh, a really forgiving fork uh, with just a single spring on each side uh, an example of this would be so this is a this is a front wheel here uh, and a fork here connecting to a frame really nice looking bike here uh, uh, if you have a fork like this it's gonna be uncontrollably unstable to the sides because you just have one spring You need to do this, uh, but a lot of people have tried to do this to make uh, forgiving or compliant forks throughout the years. Uh, needless to say, uh, none of these uh, forks have ever achieved any significant uh, travel, uh, because if they would, they would be impossible to ride. So yeah, uh, now I've uh, explained to you uh, the reason behind the vertical displacement between our springs, upper and lower stacks. Uh, but it's always better to show uh, than to tell. Uh, so I'm gonna show you what happens to this here specimen. Uh, if I remove one of the springs, uh, so first off, uh, with both springs in place, okay, you're just gonna have to believe me that I'm really trying to twist this thing here and not much happens uh, but if I bring out this guy here and remove one spring let's see what happens then
So don't do this to your love work. Yeah. So here I've uh, removed one of the springs uh, and ended up uh, with a single spring yeah, component of a forgiving uh, com composite fork. <coughs> so now if I try to twist it, this is a different story. Yes. So you go into a turn, this happens, you fall over. Uh, you break, this happens, uh, the wheel goes underneath you, so... Don't make a fork like this. So, uh, if any of our competitors is watching, please continue making forks like this. Wow, 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 wow. So if you want uh, a forgiving uh, and compliant uh, composite fork, a fork without the hassle of a conventional suspension fork, uh, this is what you need. Uh, okay, now we've explained uh, the importance of the upper and lower stack to you. Uh, in our next episode, we're going to look at two uh, samples of forks that don't follow this principle uh, and run some numbers uh, and to explain uh, how they fail dramatically. <laughs>